Hi, I'm David Eichels with David Richard Gallery located in New York City. And today I'm with Kevin Yamanya. And uh, Kevin worked in New York for a long time yes. and just recently during COVID um, is now living in Kansas City and working there. And uh, we're standing in his first solo show with our gallery. Yeah. It's called Wax and Wayne. And uh, what we're gonna do is talk about um, Kevin's work, it's, this is a whole new body of work conceived um, in January. Well, it took you a couple months yeah. to get it all pulled together, but it's a, a, a very interesting body of work. I thought it was actually just gonna be the large paintings. And then I realized there were all these wonderful smaller paintings and there was a new infusion into his work um, when he moved out to uh, Kansas. No, you're in Missouri, right? Uh, yeah, Missouri. On oh, the Missouri side, Kansas City. Um, that was a ceramics. And so our discussion is going to cover this sort of transition in his work that's happening right now. So I would consider this sort of transitional or pivotal sort of work. But also there's other things um, that you've been telling me that have been influencing your work quite a bit and sort mm -hmm. of a revisitation of your sort of your, your uh, cultural background. Your, your family is originally from El Salvador yes. and you'd lived in California for a long time as a child. Yeah. And so, uh, but you seem to be kind of re-engaging with your, your, the, the native, the, the indigenous people yeah. from El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And that's now having an influence on your work as well. And uh, so there's just been a lot happening, it seems like, over the last two years. Um, this seems all good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just going to give you my first impression of these paintings. Um, so Kevin's work, when I first encountered it, um, there was a body of work that he had done uh, that were uh, about the, a little smaller than this scale, but, uh, but around this scale, and easel-sized paintings, but uh, fairly rigorously geometric. And, um, and, uh, and, and I'd say reductive, fairly reductive, and a fair amount of patterning. Mm -hmm. And so when we talked and decided we wanted to work together and do a show, one of the things you had said was you wanted to go back and do a, a, a color show around, with geometry and color. And I think that aptly describes this work. Mm -hmm. But from what I had seen of your work, um, the way I would characterize these paintings is, yes, they're geometric and colorful, but I guess the one word that kind of comes to my mind, um, and this is, I think, a really good one, is exuberance. And as we pan the rest of the show and, and go around, you'll see how they become even more exuberant because when your earlier paintings you had, it seemed like more of uh, a tighter, more specific uh, geometry and a rep repetition of that, not necessarily like pure patterning, but um, this has re repeating elements, but it's not like is rigorously geometric, nor is it really developing a pattern mm -hmm. or an overall geometric sort of uh, composition per se. Yeah. Is that fair to? Yeah, I mean, um, I think with my previous works, they were heavily on the hard edge side, geometric, uh, and focus mostly on like squares and rectangles and, you know, sharp corners. Now I'm infusing this sort of curve, curve converge circles and, you know, mixture of shapes in order for it to see how the relationship acts with one another. Mm -hmm. um, and so my expansion of the my geometric work has kind of evolved soon as I started working with ceramics because uh, you know with ceramics the clay so it molds to it has a memory and it, it molds the way your hand works and and so I kind of had this new fluidity to, towards my work and and that's when you know the new shapes have come to for to, uh, fruition my work, yeah. Well, even your, uh, to just kind of put a finer point on that a bit, but just to back up, mm -hmm. even with your earlier geometric work, uh, mm -hmm. 
surface and texture was always an issue. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the bridge series in particular, where uh, these were different bridges um, from different yeah. places where you lived or, or yeah. places that you visited, like in London and Copenhagen and, and I forget what other cities here in the US, but uh, oh, Brooklyn, of course. Yeah. And um, what was interesting is you, they don't look like bridges, but they're motifs from the bridges and they were mm -hmm. the geometry of the bridges. But the other thing with the with the texture was it was like the the corrosion, the rust, the you know the the multi painted surfaces. Mm -hmm. It seems like you were trying to emulate that. Now it didn't come through so much in image in, until you sent me some high res images and I saw sort of you you were playing with surface, but it was sort of uniformly across those paintings. What's different here is these surfaces are very different within mm -hmm. a painting. So you have an array of surfaces. Um, like this one up here is very textured and, and gritty. Uh, some of them are very brushy and painterly. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are very perfectly modeled. Some of them are layers of paint where you have the, what's behind coming through. Mm -hmm. um, some of them look like you've done them with a palette knife, sort of a, a la Joseph Albers sort of approach. Some are just flat. <laughs> yeah. Know? So it's quite a range of, of uh, surfaces here. But from a distance, when you first look at it, and it, it's a geometric painting. Yeah. But then when you get up closer, it's they're very very painterly. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a game I play usually with, uh, you know, viewers. It's really like my work. I make it so from afar it looks flat and just geometric, and you know, there's nothing. There's just beautiful geometry composition, but. Up close, you, that's when you really get to notice the textures and the gestures and the sort of like uh, interest in mark making. And yeah, and so this past year I've been working with different, utilizing different tools in order to make my marks. And um, all these techniques that I've, you know, obviously have learned in the past, I've just utilized it to this whole series. And I think that's what, you know, I had fun making these pieces and, and you know the previous pieces were also fun but they were pretty much straight to the point and uh, with these new works there's a lot of uh, improvising that comes to it mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of nature that comes to it because you know it's sort of like a dance you, you know my idea I put it onto canvas but the medium kind of works its way out and so uh, yeah and so also implementing certain like, you know, like terracotta, it has these sort of symbolisms that, you know, like using certain gemstone sands, um, the flocking and... and uh, well, that's right. This one, the black. Mm -hmm. So that's painted and then you apply this, this while it's wet, sort of a flocking? Yeah. So the process of flocking is uh, you, you, you lay down a, a layer of enamel and something sticky for the, the fabric, uh, usually suede, like nylon, to stick onto it. And uh, yeah, it is, you know, it's, it's something I taught myself during the, the past year and uh, I really immersed myself in it and started implementing it on almost all my works. And I really like what the black flock does to the, the you know, the color of black, it, it really, sinks you in. It's, it's yeah, very, it gives a lot of yeah. depth. It, it's this, this, this yeah. void that you're kind of yeah. looking into and get lost in. Yeah, yeah the, um, so formally, this is really different than your other paintings. Yeah. I mean, and uh, that's what I think was really kind of caught my eye and especially just this, the palette, the, harm the harmony of the palettes. And, and the different values and things are mm -hmm. just is what I think makes them exuberant. I mean, it seems like there's things that are flat and then there's things that are coming out at you and then there's things that are receding back. And so there's this sort of dynamism about them. And what's also interesting is they're, they're rather indescribable. I mean, it's, it's hard to, you're not really sure what it is, but it's just there's something about the combination of the, of the palette and the forms, you know, just draw you in. I mean, and that's why I think there's just sort of this exuberance, you know, uh, and we'll see with some of them over here that are, have larger singular fields mm -hmm. that are very modeled, 
uh, even becomes in person much more obvious. But even just on the checklist, when you sent the checklist, I was like, wow, <laughs> these are amazing. Yeah. And, uh, but the other thing too that's interesting about your work, that's a consistency, I think, mm -hmm. is um, in those earlier paintings, and the one series that I'm thinking about is uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, or, or is the Bridge series. Yeah. And we talked about that these were bridges from different places. So most of your work has an element of place about it. And, um, and so the titles become instructive and purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like they largely direct you to, and we'll get to a little bit of a variation here, but historically, they've typically directed you to a place. Is that always been sort of the common thread? Is the titles take you to a place? Yeah, pretty much. Like all the titles, I use them as uh, sort of like time stamp. And like what? A time stamp. Like oh, it's, it's like a, time stamp. Got it's it. A, it's just a way for me to like remember certain experiences in certain places. And, you know, with the words, because they're so abstract, um, you kind, you kind. I have. I kind of have to give it a title to kind of explain it a little. And because uh, like this one's uphill pebble road. Yeah. I, sorry, I had to cheat. I don't have a memory. Yeah. So yet. <laughs> with this one, it's like um, this is. I you, you know, I tended to use the gr the color greens because in a, where my family's from, it's a very tropical, jungly mm -hmm. uh, atmosphere, and you know, there's unpaved roads, and so. Uh, it, there was always an uphill to get to my grandma's house, oh, okay. and so I decided to have the sort of like angle going uphill. Um, but I tried to figure out how to capture certain experiences and ambiance of the moment. To you know, it's really hard to you know capture energy, but it's my attempt to it. Uh, so that sort of explains, uh, so the imagery, so, okay, um, the bridge series yeah. came, was basically a motif that got sort of repeated, yeah. repeated, well, redu reduced and then amplified yes. in, in a series. What you're saying here, and, and the, because this is a similar composition to a lot of things, so what it sounds like is the transition is there's either a visual space or a place in your mind mm -hmm. and you think about it in a geometric form. Yeah. And so these aren't uh, basically a repetition of forms or, or motifs or um, pattern elements. Yeah. These are really a picture of yeah. a place or, or a situation in your mind and you've just reduced it to geometric elements and then you're using the color to bring in the emotive. Totally, yeah. And you know, it's the interaction of colors always right. add, give, invokes some sort of emotion uh, with the VRCs. And with the bridge series, you know, the whole, the concept of that was me zoning into one section of the bridge. Right. And working the shapes and the sort of like uh, magnetism of the structure. And, and you know, and they all, you know, the bridge series they correlate with one another mm -hmm. because you know, how many ways could you utilize new uh, engineering? Um, well, but I think compositionally, right? those you did, they're, they're quite diverse. Yeah. I, yeah. I was very impressed. But it sounds like though there you were like zooming in like a Google map. Yeah, you're trying to get like what is that street address? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and here you're sort of like what country are we in? Yeah, you know. So it seems like you're really stepping back and getting a bigger mental picture. And mm -hmm. how do you convey that in essentially geometry? Yeah. Is, is what I'm hearing exactly. you say. Exactly. It's like okay. how, it's like um, you know like Picasso once said like paint what you you think rather than what you see. And so I, I, Good point. I, you know, for the whole summer, I was like, that was my mantra. And it's like, how do I, <laughs> how do I um, like test people? How do I encourage them to like think outside the box and like, um. yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> it's a, more of a, the science behind the works, and right. the, the spirituality. And, uh, yeah. Well, let's, okay, so I'm really glad to ask you about that because I was pondering this myself after we were installing this last night and chatting. 
um, about the works. And I just kept looking at them, looking at the titles and stuff this morning. And, and I thought, I'm going to just kind of drill in on this a little bit because I was trying to figure out like banana tree and uh, oh, coconut palm. Oh, coconut palm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and wooden roof. And I, I think I'm getting the idea here. So, and, and but no, those... it's, it's wonderful because they really are. It's a picture of something you can tell, yeah. but yet it's like your work, it's geometric. Yeah. You know, and so I think it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And well, we ought to mention these other ones here. So um, the smaller works, so Wax and Wayne um, is the title of the show. And why don't you explain why you picked that? They're not totally lunar, but uh, so go and explain sort of why you, you've selected that. Yeah. Uh... I've always been ups, uh, kind of obsessed with uh, this uh, relationship to oppositions and, and, and this decrease and increase and uh, you know it wasn't until recently that uh, I've started becoming more connected with the natural world and got into more of this like Gartner side of like taking care of things and and I, so it was kind of like a cheeky title where I, I knew I was going to make large works and I also knew that I had small works that were correlating to those larger works. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted this sort of like tug and pull, um, you know, relationship kind of creating like a symbiotic circle and, 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 you know, it just came to me, I was, you know, reading like tarot cards and and I was like, wow, the moon, the moon phase. And it's like, I'm, I'm a cancer and like, I have such a relationship with the moon. And so I love this, like, you know, one gets bigger and the other one gets smaller and this sort of relationship, you kind of need both. And, and yeah, um, so the waxing and the waning. And the waxing and the waning. And so, yeah. and waning and no, I, it's, I think it was clever because the, uh, so just for people to, uh, who are listening or watching, um, there are these larger paintings and they are the, you know, kind of when you walk in, that's very dominant. And then there's these smaller size paintings. And then there are also small, small, slightly smaller yeah. ceramics uh, that are flat. They're paintings, but they're made of, of, mm -hmm. of ceramic. And we'll show you some of those. So um, but what's interesting is these are kind of what we call more sort of traditional but paintings. But we've already mm -hmm. described that they're not really that traditional. But, um, but you, you sort of view these as, as more experimental. Yeah, right. and so that's why we uh, partly because aesthetically it looks nice to have large and small and large and small, not everything all be the same. But it also um, these this whole show, even though there's three different really bodies, there's actually a fourth because there's actually a hybrid of painting and ceramic. Yeah. Um, so there's really four elements of, of uh, work um, or bodies of work. But what's striking me more and more, and as we were talking last night and curating, because we decided to do it when all the work was here and we just had it all laid out. And um, unfortunately, you were very open to my, my suggestions. And, and so, uh, but I just was relating to the work and letting the work kind of guide how I put it together with an, a knowledge of knowing that how this space is the, and the fact that larger next to small is just mm -hmm. more interesting for people to look at and engage with. But the dialogues are amazing, is what you and I both noted um, mm -hmm. in, in doing that. So both of these, I think, relate so nicely to this. These are pretty much paintings. There's nothing different sort of material. And we'll get to that later. These, um, but th this feels very lunar. This also has matte and very dark black and modeled geometric elements. Yeah. And the same with this. Um, this one has these nice curvilinear uh, curves which give it a lot of sort of excitement you get these sort of really nice extreme angles as they go mm -hmm. up and it's black and white so two things one is they I think work incredibly well with this painting and um, and the black and white pulls that one and the red and, and the white pulls that one mm -hmm. but yet they kind of work together but what's interesting is because the other thing you, you sort of touched on it the other thing that hit me this morning is this work, unlike uh, a lot of your other work where it's an all over sort of composition and the composition is just a singular composition that's page filling, 
uh, or canvas filling, um, these are rife with binaries. And no. you talked, and, and so it's, it's interesting um, that, you know, because like there's, there's, there's halves, and the more I know about you after already talking to you again this afternoon, yeah. is <laughs> you are fairly precise. And so that one has clear binaries, this has clear binaries, but again, though, they echo um, day, night, mm -hmm. you know, wax, wane, yeah. <laughs> you know, rising, setting, you know, it's interesting. And did, was that planned or is it just the way you're wired, it came out that way? Oh, no, they were, those were exactly planned. Okay. Um, and, well, know, it came across. It, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't at first because they don't look that similar. Yeah. But the whole body of work has this internal harmony about it, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. You know, because it takes me a while when I'm writing things. I, I like to look at things multiple times and kind of process them, and then things come to me. And every one of these I'm looking at now, I'm realizing they're binaries, mm -hmm. you know, and they're either internal tensions or they are, because you like architecture, this, this inherent symmetry in architecture, this in, inherent yeah. balance. And so that was part of the conception. Is that why it took four months to plan it? <laughs> it yeah. So like I was telling David, uh, you know, I was told about the show in January and it took four months to uh, conceptually, you know, sketch out every idea I had. And so, you know, initially I sent you like uh, 120 sketches that I was like, hey, these are all the works that I wanted to make and then um those never came those the sketches never no, came they never came so no i never uh, saw this and just like that other one you sent me never came uh when you thought the, the high-res images yeah i don't know what happened i oh. it, they went somewhere and i looked in yeah. spam and everything but anyway not to bore the rest of the audience yeah. with this but anyway no i never saw that i yeah. had no idea and that's, i was thinking it was like 10 paintings Oh, and so no, yeah. when you did send the, the pictures, I was like so blown away. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was wild. It's, and uh, so you, you were really yeah. slaving, but it's amazing. This is a lot of work and the execution and the quality and everything's incredible. And it, you know, it, 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 not even quite a full year. Yeah, no, not nine even months. A, nine months. And yeah. uh, you, know, I had, you know, I had the title out maybe early on and I just kind of had it above my computer and I was like, okay, I got to remember to incorporate this idea of Wax and Wayne in all my pieces. And so I yeah. had added this relationship with, you know, matte versus sheen, uh, texture, yeah. rough texture versus smooth texture and oil versus acrylic and you know, all these nature versus uh, modernism, or like, you know, industrial revolution and all these ideas um, and you know I kind of just wanted to show the symbiotic relationship and how they work side by side to make one. No it, it definitely and that's why when you sent the checklist I would just flip through it you know, I printed it out and I looked at first looked on the screen and scrolled it and it's just you immediately get this interaction and relationship and it's like last night you know when we were curating and doing in the because this particular space as you can see there's like discrete areas which mm -hmm. is what i like about it so mm -hmm. you have like little areas where you can have something that's totally different but every view of this show no matter where you stand even if the color is like i'm looking opposite and pointing to something that the viewers can't see but they will um is this wall over here there was a slightly different color palettes but i realized there are a number of other things that are sort of like that but they do work when you look at different angles that kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I'm glad to hear you talk, talk about uh, how this was a, a concept because it, it truly comes through when you flip through the work and, you, and especially when you try and you know, curate it, even though they're very different mediums mm -hmm. and formats and size differences, you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing the relationship and so one of the things that strikes me is the power of color yeah. and the power of how your mind when there is a theme even though it's subtle and carried through it, it's amazing how your mind puts it together you see it that way or at least mine does anyway but yeah. you know it, it so it, it, it it's extremely successful I think from that regard and um, and, and very well executed so yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I 
been listening to a lot of like pet sounds from Beach Boys and one thing that stuck out to me was you know Brian Wilson would talk about uh, making an album that's conceptually is one thing and so that's how I'm trying to approach my way of working now it's instead of focusing on individual pieces yeah I have them you know I have all the panels and you know pieces lined up in my studio and try to work on series rather than um, individuals and well it's easier to do that when I heard you describing to Andrew Spence uh, sort of your studio and process mm -hmm. then I realized oh that's kind of having that the, that's a great luxury to have a studio that size to have mm -hmm. all of the show around you mm -hmm. to see and it allows you then to edit and keep seeing the work and keep that internal harmony yeah. and also your palette selections yeah and I think you know there is a lot of color in the show but I can't say I've recycled any of those onto the other ones so like this green is specifically for that right. piece and you know this blue doesn't go with that blue over there and so but it's weird those two though i wanted yeah. them separated remember i talked to you about yeah. that last night i mm -hmm. didn't want it to feel like well this is our blue department you know yeah. um but um but this one you know pulls out a harmony with the other one that we have over there which is predominantly the, mm -hmm. the takeaway color is yellow on that one yeah. so anyway no i think it was very successfully uh, put together but also just the scales even the internal scales of your elements are quite different mm -hmm. you know these are big bold blocks yeah. and then i'm looking down there at the one that's got that sort of um, terracotta and the different shades of blue yeah. they're much smaller but because of the repetition it becomes less busy though it mm -hmm. feels bigger chunks of imagery you know even though the individual components are smaller whereas here their individual components are bigger you know what i mean so it's yeah. It, it's a, it's a way, of, a, a technical way of doing the trade-off. Even if you weren't even thinking about it, you're, you're just inherently, or probably wired to do it that way, oh, yeah. because it doesn't make it so busy. But um, yeah, it's like uh, I always try to make something complex, uh, you know, seem simple. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It's, it's like, no, and you can definitely see that in the work. So we'll move to this other wall. Uh, the other thing, only thing I'd like to do is for the audience, the people who are listening, if you're enjoying listening to Kevin and uh, all of, you know, we, we do this with all the artists, living artists, of course. And uh, <laughs> but even with the estates of people who are deceased, we find their friends and other family members and people to talk mm -hmm. to or other, you know, critics and curators and writers like myself. But, um, but if, you're, if you enjoy these uh, things, please subscribe to, um, to the, to the videos and uh, to receiving uh, announcements about them. So just, we encourage people to subscribe. Let us know you like them and uh, you can always make comment and let us know, but uh, we encourage uh, you guys to subscribe. So we'll take a pause here and see you on the other side. <laughs>